Hello everyone, welcome to Game Junk Prototype episode 68, recording on Thursday, July 8th, 2021. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. And my name is Andrew. And as fate would have it, a Sony State of Play dropped today, so we'll be talking about all the games that were announced or shown there, as well as a big Nintendo OLED announcement, and it's been two weeks, maybe we'll have a bunch of stuff we played. Maybe we won't. I probably won't. But I'll touch on a few things. But uh, it's been, it has been a while. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing great. I mean, you guys went away to cottages for the long weekend, so I feel a little left out. But I was playing VR, so I got to go somewhere as well. <laughs> there you go. You're set. Now, Sean's been hyping this up. I don't know how much he's telling the truth here. He says he's like basically living under the visor. <laughs> and... I mean, I don't know what those numbers mean. Unfortunately, we won't have annual numbers from Oculus to compare with his Sony numbers from last year. But uh, well, I, like I'm playing Steam stuff, so I definitely have. You have some Steam numbers. Play hours for that. Yeah. Mm. If you just let games run in Steam, though, the, you can really juice those numbers. It's... Yeah, that's kind of already happened a little bit. So. <laughs> You've probably played Half-Life Alex for 50 hours at this point. <laughs> I need the chapter. Is there chapters? I don't even know if there's chapters. Did you buy uh, any VR games in the Steam sale? Oh, shit. Yeah. Is, that, is that end today? I yeah, think it ends it's done, shortly. I think. Oh, my God. I gotta, it's got to be go till midnight, right? I forgot to buy Half-Life Alex in case I bought a PC. Oh All right, you guys keep God. talking. Gonna buy you don't have Half-Life Alex? Oh, you, my goodness. You just screwed yourself, bud. What an uh, amateur. <laughs> Steam sale is done. Oh, God. What a moron. All right. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> just buy a full price right now. You know you're nope. going to. Now I don't have to buy a PC. We're good to go. Nice. <laughs> I saved myself three grand. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if, like, this is kind of a weird thing to just jump into here, but I, I ordered a video card. And, you uh, actually were able to? I was. I'm, like, so worried that it's not going to work or something because it's not, like, it's not obviously not, like, super high-end, top of the line. It's just something it? that – what's that? 1660? What are we talking here? Yeah, 1660. 2070? Wait, 1660 what? Super. 1660 is, is that AMD? No. What is a 1660? Nvidia. What are you talking about? Nvidia. GTX. You're talking like three years ago? Oh, it's older than that, I think. Probably. Yeah. I have a I, I have a 1080 Ti. What do you? Okay. What is? This? I think that's better than a. a I I currently have 1660. What is? That? Currently, I've have never heard of that. A Radeon RX 580, which is like, I mean it. It's fine, but obviously it's like like I was saying last time, it's like the bare minimum for How old is that piece of shit alienware you bought? Sean. How are we how close are we to dying? How old is that computer? <laughs> I mean it's probably Sean, like five you, why years. Why would you at order least. this card? Why would you order this? They're still I don't in know. I'm just, because I, I I just want to improve the VR experience if I can. And it was like, I don't know, five hundred bucks, not crazy. I'm like I'm looking at the NVIDIA website right now and the 16 series is the last thing in their list like this is the oldest thing you could buy this doesn't even have Probably. ray tracing it, why don't you get a 20 like, a 2060 i think, I think well, whole, just waking up to the fact that sean is all about middle of the road <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Uh, I mean, I'm running theme yeah it is but i mean it's also like it's just like i i, I don't want to buy a whole new machine so i was like okay what's what can i do to improve the experience a bit without going crazy and that was what i came up with so we'll see tune I don't in, know if tune in next work. week when this uh 1660 doesn't fit his motherboard <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know if this thing's gonna show up but <laughs> we'll see i got it from i think well, either way we can talk right. i could i might if it runs half-life alex i might take the old one off your hands and try to all right. Oh, this thing, so. All right. Anyway, let's uh, let's continue on with state of play. The real news here today, <laughs> which was uh, I got to be honest. I'm the Sony fanboy here. Kind of came out of nowhere. Said it was featuring Death Loop. We'll get to that. But overall, really not moving my needle very much. Like some intriguing stuff, I guess, to use a word that Jay loves to hear when we say, uh, I was mildly intrigued but overall <laughs> you know nothing honestly everything felt kind of middle of the road to me other than fist which i'd seen before 
which seems like it's up my alley specifically, like weird uh, humanoid animal, uh, two, two and a half D action game. I think I would be into a hundred percent, but let's kind of go through them. So uh, the first thing was Moss book two. Uh, I never finished Moss, even though I liked it. Sean, did you finish Moss? Nope. Still haven't finished it, but I did like it. I almost bought it again on Oculus. I, or maybe I did, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I think it's on sale today again. So. Oh, is it? Shit, maybe we'll buy the right... Oh, I don't know. If <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been tempted to rebuy it as well, but I'll, I'll probably finish it on PSVR. And now that there's a part two coming out, I guess that's a little more motivation. Well, if my memory serves, there's a, a trophy on PlayStation for beating it without dying. So I'm thinking I should do my fun playthrough on Oculus, and then once I know where every collectible and death spot is then i can go like i have to play it twice on playstation anyway so i might it, it works out perfectly this is a perfect scenario which i'll never actually do uh but it looked pretty good i'm i'm into it yeah i mean I, this is probably the thing i was most excited about to be honest so i never played moss the original and from this trailer i can't tell what is vr about it how do you play moss in VR. It's really just about perspective. At least the chapters I played, it's kind of like a storybook where you're kind of going through different scenes or dioramas that are part of the story. Uh, there's some combat and puzzle solving. It's pretty simple. Uh, this looks like it's got a much heavier emphasis on combat as well as a moving camera and perspective. Like it seemed less diorama -y, but I don't know if Moss, as you progress through the game, becomes more like that in the first one. But from what I played, it's like the camera moves a bit, but it's kind of like you're taking in a location. It's basic exploration, navigation. Does that sound right, Sean? Yeah, it's just like you're kind of, you're, it feels like your face is planted in the environment and you're kind of controlling this. Yeah, you're an observer. It's nice. kind of, I think that Ghost Giant game was like that a bit, or there was another game where you were like an observer manipulator. Uh, and I yeah. think that's what Moss is. So again, looks okay. Let's not get crazy here. Still waiting so for... The, yes, so then you could you control the mouse as like a third person yeah. overhead camera type thing or something along those lines. Kind of like the Astrobot VR, but probably not as good. Which I also haven't played. <laughs> Which I really should go back and play since I love the PlayStation 5 one so much. Uh, next is... Arcade Ageden, which is a, a shooter. Like, I get, let me read this description. From the makers of Predator Hunting Grounds and Friday the 13th, uh, the bubbly Splatoon looking multiplayer game gets a full release in 2022. So, maybe trying to do something uh, similar to Garden Warfare from a marketability standpoint for this developer, which has kind of made mature uh, rated games, but trying to get those kitties hooked on their art style and shooter, maybe trying to compete in Fortnite. I got to be honest. A lot of the kids uh, that I know seem to be losing interest in Fortnite. I don't know if that's a thing in general, but uh, I could see uh -oh. the Fortnite, unless they've got something planned, the, uh, the bubble bursting sometime soon based on what I'm hearing. Frank's in with the kids. All my friends have a lot of kids and they talk to me about <laughs> games a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Kieran was never that into Fortnite, but he's like all in on Minecraft these days. That's I was gonna playing, so. I was gonna say Minecraft isn't going anywhere. And Rocket League is really popular with kids right now too, from what I've seen. Hmm. But since it went free to play. Um but this game really really reminded me of that knockout city game. A little bit, yeah. Same I totally agree. I gotta, I gotta say, wasn't really like super impressed with it. I thought the, mm -hmm. the collecting of loot and stuff looked satisfying, very Fortnite-ish. Uh, but to be honest, when I saw that, like they shot someone and then all this stuff spilled out, like the loot, right? It made me realize and appreciate again how good and satisfying picking up bolts is in ratchet and clank rift apart. Like they're everywhere. <laughs> they like all get sucked to you. It's like the most, the sound, everything like that's the difference. You see something like that. And it's like, it just feels kind of blah. And when you're playing a game like that, a super polished game, 
they've worked on that the bolts economy for so many games it just feels so good and rewarding so uh another shout out to rift apart which we have yet to review um are you good with that sean you agree 100 percent with everything i'm saying <laughs> well, I, I don't know i mean i thought the game looked colorful and cool but yeah not really my thing ratchet and clank we'll talk we'll talk about it okay this guy's fucked uh <laughs> <laughs> Next is Tribes of Midgard, which it, I think it said, was this the one that was a, um, the 10 player one or what? Yeah, I think it is right. A 10 player RPG, which, uh, um, did it say that? I don't know if it I said think that. it did. I think it said up to 10 players and it like, they're definitely pushing like season based, uh, stuff definitely reminded me of a mix of like torchlight hades um and uh jotun like kind of a mixture of all those things looked pretty polished i think you said that before the show right huck and and, and i would agree uh no so, i was i was, was talking about, about a different yeah. game okay but this one looked pretty good although i'm getting a little bit of repetition like i feel like i've seen something like this many times before not well, that we've that, seen this trailer like three times before. I I don't, or at least this game. Oh, if that's the case, yeah, this, this then, game was at a bunch of different E3. Oh, maybe before. not the ones I watched because I was gonna say <laughs> that's not a good sign because I didn't remember it at all. But I'm usually pretty good at remembering games, so um, I I think it looks good. I just I feel like I've played a million games like this, and I don't know why I would play this one. I guess the only the 10 player thing could be intriguing and they're definitely pushing this idea of seasons and exclusivity. And if the, like I would try this when it came out and kind of my barrier to entry for new season based games is like having missed a bunch of seasons. So I think if I got in on this early and the, the combat and gameplay was really good, I, you know, maybe we'll play some co-op. Like it could, there could be an opportunity there comes out july 27th what did you guys think yeah i think it looks pretty cool i kind of it's one of those things i wish it was on game pass actually because i would like to try it out but am i gonna run out and buy this day one probably not but um it is a playstation exclusive yeah when when does the diablo 2 uh remake come out is that that's like uh -huh. after the summer right like september or yeah, something like that so. this yeah I'm just checking the the price. Oh, I mean, this is kind of intriguing. On Steam, at least, this game is twenty four ninety nine. Hmm. So bad. it's a pretty reasonable price, I would say, from what I've seen. I'm in. We're playing day one. <laughs> Get ready. I have I have zero interest in this game. I think it looks yeah, to play. Oh. really boring, <laughs> and I will not be playing it with you guys. You guys can. I'll be there in spirit while you guys waste your time. <laughs> wow, harsh. Harsh. I'm in a harsh kind of mood, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Here come the Game Pass heroes. <laughs> Christ. All right, next was uh, Fist Forged in Shadow Torch. Not really loving that, but... Uh, <laughs> I am loving the gameplay. I think it looks really fun. It's like I mentioned in the intro, it's my kind of game, kind of like what Biomutant was, but two and a half D. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. Biomutant was lacking the gameplay, but as long as this is solid action combat, I am in on Fist. What say ye? Looks good. I think it looks really good. Now, I'm with you, though. If the gameplay is not there... Obviously, it will not be too highly sought after, but I thought it looked really good. I th I think we've seen a very similar trailer to this already, though. I think so, so there wasn't many surprises here. Maybe I was trying to look it up, but I couldn't find it. If this was the first time they announced the release date, maybe that was it, which is September 7th. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is kind of like their release date trailer. Um, I don't So that could be what they were kind of hyping in this one. Yeah. Let's check yeah. some races. It, Go ahead, it does look very good. Um, I guess I'm curious if it's more of like a straight up linear, like almost like a brawler, or if there is like a platforming Just, repeat, just repeating element. a headline here, Sean. 
yeah. from Polygon. I would never use this word. Fist Forged in Shadow Torch is a Metroidvania game coming this year. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> you know, I'm in. shit. Hype train just went off the rails for Sean. Definitely nope. more interested now. <laughs> I thought you might be. Actually, that makes it more interesting to me. I didn't see any Metroidvania aspects that I can think of. Like, did they show yeah, him it's, collecting it's anything on... really? Or... It's mostly combat no, focused. Just combat, it? yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, thought. I could definitely see how it could be a Metroid. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, Metroid like. And... <laughs> <laughs> Careful, bud. It is pre-order uh, with PlayStation Plus, twenty six ninety nine Canadian. So. Mm. Pre-order away. It's that that seems like a very reasonable price for this yeah. game. I thought it would be in the forty, the forty dollar range. It felt like a game that with a polish level that would be pushing to like thirty nine ninety nine or something. Yeah, like that. So, yeah, exactly. I'm in. I'm in. I may pre-order. Probably won't. I'll just buy it the day before. Uh, next, Hunters Arena Legends. By I mean I loved this company's logo, Mantis Co. They're like a praying mantis as the, the letter N, I think. Oh, yeah. That is sweet, dude. <laughs> I am into that logo. That's the best thing about this presentation as far as I'm concerned. But this is, I think their pitch was Battle Re Royale meets Fighting Game was the elevator pitch. And I got to be honest, I didn't, and what I saw, if they hadn't said that, I would have seen neither of those things. I didn't see like any... Like, obviously you can't always, there's no maps and HUD, so you can't see the, whatever the constricting element is in the battle Royale. And it didn't look like a fighting game to me. When I hear fighting game, I think like, you know, street fighter, mortal Kombat. this kind of looked like a brawler. Maybe I would think leaning to a battle Royale for honor. I don't know if, it, I don't think it has like a paper, rock, scissors system like that game, but, uh, I don't know. Looked okay. Got to be honest. Didn't look like my thing. What about you guys? Yeah, not really my thing from what I'm seeing. I mean, it, like it seems like it's more of like a like one-on-one -on -one kind of thing, but obviously it's not like a 2D. I, I assume it's like a huge multiplayer game if it's Battle Royale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There is some stuff with like multiple people in it. But everything they showed was kind of one-on-one, -on -one, and they had that one mechanic where you can hide above and then pounce on someone below you, which sounds intriguing. But the more I thought about it, I'm like, so, like you just wait around until someone's below mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Like, doesn't sound like that much fun. Looks cool in a quick trailer, but I can't see it being a great gameplay mechanic. Yeah. I thought it looked really visually impressive. And uh, to stick with uh, Frank's, let's look it up on steam uh, mentality that he's currently <laughs> taking. I did that. And this game is currently in early access on Steam, on sale currently 50% off for eleven fifty nine Canadian. Hmm. So it is a twenty dollar game regularly. Which was this I don't the know game what... that's coming to PlayStation Plus? I think it was. Yes. So, so that could and be for that. I read so it currently has mixed reviews on Steam, and I was reading some of the negative ones that have come in very recently, and apparently there's like no one playing this. So people can't even get into games. So that is yeah. a little concerning that it has no hype on Steam at all. But um, I don't know. Maybe it'll do better with the PlayStation Plus bump that it'll get. Yeah, it uh, seems like that's what they're hoping for. So Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I don't know if it's going to be my style of game, but it definitely looks polished. It was definitely was more polished than I had anticipated. And... So in, in Steam, it says it was released July 15th, 2020. So it has been kind of in early access for over a year now, or about, just about a year. So you'd think they'd have most of the kinks with like the gameplay and the balance kind of worked out by now, hopefully. So it should be maybe good. I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. Yeah, interesting mix of like fantasy and like kind of cartoony animal stuff. I'll be honest. I was not like I was mildly interested, and then when it got to the goofy stuff, like the disco balls and all that, I was kind of out. I'm like, yeah, why? Did, yeah, why totally did, a little weird. Why do they focus on that? Like customize? Like I understand people like to customize, but why do people focus on it so much in trailers? It seems like such a weird 
use of that time? Like, is that it, drawing I mean, just, people into the game? I feel like it adds like an association to Fortnite, like knowing that there's going to be kind of like funny dances and costumes and stuff in there. Yeah, mm. but I guess kids like that, but that's why they have shit tasting games. <laughs> uh, next is Jet the Far Shore which apparently had been shown multiple times before I was not aware of it and I don't remember seeing anything I mean to me it seemed like a third person or half third person No Man's Sky in a way mm-hmm. where you're kind of exploring planets and I really liked what I saw I don't know if it'll be fun, but the art style, camera, um, locomotion of the jet and exploring wildlife, I was very intrigued. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what you guys think. I'm in. So I I didn't think the like flying around looked very interesting, but I did get heavy like No Man's Sky vibes with... I guess a little additional story. I don't know. I haven't played No Man's Sky in a long time, so I don't know if they added a lot more story type elements with like crew members or not, but um, it seemed like they were kind of taking elements from No Man's Sky and then adding in. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I thought you were going to say Outer Worlds. I they definitely. Oh, should... Outer. Oh, I wasn't going to say Outer Worlds. I was just going to oh. say just like the crew member aspect, having a crew okay. and having the dialogue options of having a crew, like That's... kind of playing up the story of your crew, which I don't think No Man's Sky has. Oh, I meant Outer Wilds. Think. Sorry, not Outer Worlds. I always confuse them. Outer Wilds. Outer like, Wilds? Okay. Like the idea of exploring and finding out lore stuff. But I was mm-hmm. going to say Outer Wilds also seemed like it was an influence on Deathloop when we get there where part of the uh, loop is like learning about the nature of the place that you're at as well. So, I mean, that was alluded to very lightly. So I don't know if that's actually the case, but jet Sean seems like your cup of tea. Not going to lie. Where are you at, bud? Yeah. I mean, I, I like the look of it and I like, well, I mean, it's been a long time since super brothers have done anything, but I kind of liked that sword and sorcery game they did. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, it definitely feels like No Man's Sky, and I was super excited for No Man's Sky, and then I still haven't played it. So I'm kind of like, well, maybe I should go play that first. Well, dude, that's, like, apparently on VR. It's come, like, so far. Yeah. And I, mean, I actually meant to mention this with that Heroes game. Sorry, finish your thought. Or Hunter's Arena. I keep calling it Heroes. It was stupid. <laughs> No, yeah, I just, I, I want to play it. I just haven't got to it, which, you know, is, I guess, an indication maybe of my interest level, just that I keep putting yeah. it off, but... I have it installed on my PC as well, and I have not touched it yet. I think, it, you know, I think why? I think it's just daunting. Yeah. Like, the fact that it's so huge and that it's almost like an MMO that you have to kind of, like, dive into, and I, I really want to play it as well, but I also am very turned off by just, like, the sheer scale of the universe that you'll have to jump into. I remember playing it a while ago and I, it wasn't that great. And that, or like when it first came out, I guess, but that's been like what, four or five years now since no man's sky came out and they've been constantly updating it. So, yeah. okay. For the, for the game pass gentlemen here, uh, no man's sky at some point was on game pass. Was it not? Still is. It still is. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you have VR on PC, can you play it in VR through Game Pass on PC? Apparently you can. I was looking into this because there's also Subnautica has VR uh, on Game Pass on I PC. Love Subnautica. And um, I think Star Wars Squadrons as well, that works. Hmm. So Interesting. I will yeah. have to give this a try. You'll have to send yeah. me the links, do I? All right, Sean. Well, there's your excuse. You got the, you're under the visor. Now you got the premium, well, not premium. That's like a crazy, but you've got the middle of the road, much better. <laughs> you can try this out on. That's better than the PSVR cord. Well, you still got a cord, I'm, but less cord. I'm getting more and more reasons all the time to play it. So <laughs> I will eventually. Uh, next is Lost Judgment, a sequel to 2019's Yakuza spinoff, Judgment. was not. I'll be honest, was not familiar with this game at all, Judgment. Um, it kind of had an interesting, like setup with a trial, 
I know nothing about judgment. My vibe watching this was like a new age uh, Shenmue. Does that sound right? Well, Lots they did mini games and doing activities, or they did do another game just called Judgment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm assuming Judgment was like that too. Yeah, so I think it was kind of like more detective-y. It looked like there was like some platforming stuff in this though, hmm. and like some other weird things. So definitely I, weird I, mini games and dancing and stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't play Judgment. It's on. It's on my library list, but uh, haven't got to it yet. But I think this is probably just like a, basically a sequel to that one. I don't think it has as much in common with the other Yakuza games. Yeah, as... I think it is direct. Well, maybe not direct, but a sequel. It's like a spinoff. A spinoff, yeah. I think. A spinoff of Yakuza, a sequel to, to Judgment. Yeah. Yakuza is one of those franchises where there's a million sequels. I don't know how there's that many sequels, but people love those games. They're just there's like seven yeah. Yakuza games, and spin off, like and then yeah. there's the spin off games. There's like that, like a dragon, and yeah. yeah, there's tons. Just not for me. I I do really want to try one of these games at some point, but it's like where do you even start, right? Did I skip one? What happened to that other weird? You skipped game? a couple. You skipped in the Saifu, yeah, Saifu but... and Demon Slayer. Oh, I'm, okay. I, I got off my original article. My bad. Yes, I did. Saifu was supposed to be next, which we've talked about before, and we were all extremely impressed. Uh, I would say not a lot new to add, except for the camera perspective seems to shift even more than we thought and is like a very uh, exciting aspect to the gameplay. So I'm more excited for that game. I assume the same for both of you. Mm-hmm. There is... Did they do the age thing before? Oh yeah, that was the new thing too. I don't remember that. So yeah, I don't either. To wonder, like, I thought the thing was going to be like, if you don't succeed before you die, like, like you actually age through mm-hmm. iterations of the game, and you have like a limited lifetime to do this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, they didn't. It wasn't really clear what the age thing was about, and and I was trying to watch to see if like, did your guy get slower? Did he, you know, it looked like when he hit like 49, I think he started to like take hits. So maybe his defense is not as good or something. It was kind of strange. Like they didn't really explain what the age thing was about. And I was interested in that mechanic. Yeah, definitely. I was, I was like, I couldn't remember anything that did that. And there's a lot of possibilities with that. I don't know if they're necessarily fun, but I'm certainly eager to see what they did with it or what they Mm -hmm. do. Yeah. And then the other thing at the end, which was weird, is they showed 2021 and then they kind of like rolled it over to early 2022, which I imagine they originally announced they were coming on 2021. But like, why bring it up? Why not just like put the new I, I agree. Why, I'm like, like, I didn't know when this game was coming out. I yeah, yeah. I don't understand why they brought attention to it. Like, oh, sorry, we're going to be late. Here you go. Like, why, why even bring attention to it? Just put up the new date. It seems strange to me. But the people who are going to be mad, be mad anyway. On yeah, yeah. Social media or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Strange. I mean, it was definitely meant to be, I guess, like a delay announcement trailer as well, which is weird. <laughs> Unless it, they thought it was a clever tie-in. I can't remember like how the age title cards looked. Like if it bumped off your old age the way it did, if it was just like a play on how the game ages as well, it would have been hmm. part of it. Not that I still think it was a great idea. Not that I, that, not that that makes it a great idea, but that's maybe a rationalization they could have had. All right, another game I skipped. Uh, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaba, the Hinokami <laughs> Chronicles, which I great name. Have Have you heard about this before? I've never heard about it before. No. I don't know if it's a franchise or an anime or something like that. I. I don't know. I believe it is an anime. It says video game adaptation, so yeah, it must be. Um, I got to say, I feel like I've seen a lot of games like this, including that new Dragon Ball game, and even Scarlet Nexus to some degree has a similar art style, but Mm -hmm. I will say the combat looked really good. It looked fun. Uh, That's all I could really take away, not knowing anything about this franchise or... um, the backgrounds are all the same kind of brown cube. Yeah. I was, was, was going to say, one. that looks pretty bad. It kind of reminded me of like the dungeons in Persona 4 Golden mixed with like, um, oh, I had it. What was, what's that game? 
called Dragon Ball Z with like Dragon Ball Z characters almost where they're like fighting. And, and yeah, it was just really an odd trailer because it did seem like all the environments were very sparse. They all were very, you know, almost like PS2 or PS3 style yeah. environments uh, with with very blocky. And then you had like one enemy that you're facing and it didn't really explain much about the game other than there's combat but i mean that's not much of much yeah of it didn't seem like a lot for a game that's coming out in september i think or was it october yeah october it was 15th pretty, yeah pretty pretty close and i mean i'm guessing based on what i saw it's also coming out on the switch i don't know if that's true but yeah maybe the switch is lead platform then I yeah I... <laughs> <laughs> a little strange yeah i mean i'm not gonna play it because you know, it's one of those things where it's like, if I don't know the anime, like, I just feel like I'm going to have no clue. But for the record, Sean is not allowed to play this game. If it gets tens, he said, I'm not going to play it. Not allowed. <laughs> I mean, it it's just a weird thought. Like, have you guys, can you guys think of any, like, there's a lot of games based on anime series out there. And like, I don't, I just, where do you start with stuff like this? Like, unless you know the series, I mean, I guess I've tried some of the Dragon Ball ones and stuff, but I I know Dragon Ball. That's like one of the few I do know. So, uh, yeah, just not really for me, I guess. I guess if, if the game gets 10 out of 10, you should probably give it a try. No. Nope. It's probably a good game. I mean, I'm trying to think of a case where that's ever happened, but I can't think of one. Maybe there's one. There definitely are some where it's like you pr- – once the reviews came out and you're like, well, I'll give it a poke then or something like that. And even though you had no interest, that's must well, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about me. Yes. I've certainly done that many times. I'm just talking about like, has there been like a 10 out of 10, like, Hey, even if you don't know this anime series, you've got to play this game. Oh, like specifically anime. I thought you might've meant like franchise. Mm. No. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm struggling right now and I'm kind of embarrassed because I know there's a really good answer. Probably. Uh, <laughs> So Near Automata is that based on a? I'm thinking, well, it's a, a, a sequel, so anime. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I so. uh, Death Stranding, director's cut, which really made me think I should finally play uh, Death Stranding because I, I've been. Tr- I'm gonna say I tried a bunch of games. Nothing seems to be like sticking these days. So I. I I'm going to try Death Stranding again. Hope it, uh, hope this time I get it or I like it because I got to get that auto pop trophy at the very minimum or <laughs> save for the director's cut. But I will say, seemed like there was a lot of stuff. I don't know if this is stuff I just didn't get to in Death Stranding, but the combat, the racing, uh, yeah, was there weapons? robot AI friends and all this stuff? I'm like, I, this yeah, seems like I, a lot of new stuff. I had the same thought about the combat. I was like, I play, I played probably like 10 hours or more of death stranding. I don't think I ever got to combat. I was just running from everything all the time. Like, I don't know if I was playing it wrong or, or what, but that act like the trailer actually definitely made me want to go back and play the game. So I, I think it's like a $10 upgrade if you have the game already. So that's not bad. I mean, free would be nice, but whatever. You're getting some serious content, but you're going to want to be in those races. You're going mm-hmm. to go to that shooting. <laughs> Same for the uh, Ghost of Tsushima director's cut as well, which I don't think we've talked about, but that was recently announced. That better auto pop. Um, <laughs> I'm not platinuming that game again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lastly, uh, Death Proof was the ho- feature. You can't, even, loop. you can't even say it right. That's Let's how entertaining Death it proof? is. Honestly, death, the logo kind of looks like death proof. It does kind of look like death proof. Didn't death proof have quotes around it? This has quotes around death loop. Yeah. It's like the kind of grindhouse style thing. Yeah. I didn't realize how big of a ripoff that was, but um, (laughs) we've kind of debated what this is and our level of interest. I was mildly interested. I haven't really played the dishonored games, which are made by the same studio arcane. I believe is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Um, I was kind of surprised. It's weird that I didn't put this together before or just seeing, I mean, it's a death loop. 
it seems like a triple a roguelike which is what returnal was it seems like they both kind of had the same idea there's all these indie roguelikes we should turn it into a triple a game uh which i mean i i would be interested if they improve upon i actually think from what i saw in the trailer they've taken measures to make it less punishing and you know combat some of the frustrations people had with returnal like i, I don't know how the eight uh whatever those bosses are called work. Like if you have to go through all of them in order and you know, if it's a continuous run aspect like returnal, but I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm not really vibing with this game and like, I can tell you why I can tell you why. Well, not a third person action game. (laughs) (laughs) That is not why (laughs) I guess there's elements of Hitman and like figuring out how to kill people, which I don't like Hitman games either. That's not my thing. And I honestly, the, the swearing and like the trying to be cool dialogue of the, the characters in the trailer really didn't do anything for me. Um, kind of reminded me of the beyond good and evil trailer from a while back, like just saying F bombs constantly because it's cool. Uh, but uh yeah what do you guys think sean this is probably you were the one that was the most excited for this game so yeah i mean this trailer did make me a little less interested uh, if i'm honest i mean I've, i've enjoyed the marketing that they've done so far but i feel like i did not fully grasp you know how the time loop concept worked into the gameplay until they this trailer and i mean it makes perfect sense you know how it seems to be playing out and I'm still kind of curious how they are going to kind of weave story into that. Uh, you know, I assume it's, it seems like it's going to be really hard to kill all your targets, uh, you know, early on, right? So it's kind of like every time you die, there's going to be some new thing revealed that'll make easier to kill this one person or something. Well, part of it was listening to conversations, which when I hear that, I'm like, snooze fest. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, Do they I mean, have a bench I, you could sit on yeah. while you're doing it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still interested, but definitely a little less now. And I was I was never really interested in this game, and uh, I didn't even get through this trailer, so I have no comments at all. <laughs> Doesn't look bad. I I guess it could be another. I just like the world of Returnal so much more. I, like and I don't play that game. So I don't know why this, like my motivation for playing Returnal is like, I love the sci-fi, the mood and this one. I'm just not into the, I remember loving the, like the look of the trailer and the vibe, but the gameplay stuff just, Oh, like I'm going to buy it. Let's not bullshit here. It's a PlayStation exclusive. I'm going to buy it and force feed the shit out of this game. uh, (laughs) Going to be the last, like before Bethesda, drops their megaton on game pass this one's going to be the the legacy of playstation bethesda so i've, I've got to force feed the shit out of it but <laughs> as i've always said i think bethesda is really overrated as a company in general and this is another example so i stand by that huh. okay all right that's it let's give it a grade we did grades before let's give this sony state of play a grade I mean, are we thinking this was like their rebuttal to E3? We have to, Sean. We have nothing else to go with other than <laughs> well, I, I just treat they, it as such. <laughs> they did say that there's going to be more coming this summer. Like oh, they, they specifically all said, said more coming. You know, no, no first party stuff, no PSVR two stuff, but there will be more for those things coming this summer. So, probably some bigger state of plays coming. Well. That's fine. Everyone else has more stuff coming later this summer. So <laughs> this is E3 for them. I'm sorry, Sony. I'm going to hold you to every standard. I would hold any other major developer. Give it a grade. Out of five stars or letter grade? Letter. We did letter grades. Oh, jeez. I don't remember <laughs> when I gave everything else. It's a C plus. C plus. Strong. I'll give it a C minus. I am also giving it a C minus. Okay. Now Keep showing prior to E3, I said Sony won E3 by releasing ratchet and clank the week of, which was better than anything I saw at E3. 
So if you combine those two, Sony's still one E3. But if we're just looking at these videos, last place, Sony. <laughs> Especially since most of it was we've Except seen already. Games. Just to be clear, we didn't grade Ubisoft. True. And not a lot of new stuff either, so, you know. Yeah. You got to bring the heat, Sony. This ain't going to do it. All right, let's move. Speaking of not bringing the heat, let's. And speaking uh, of heat, come on. No, let's talk about <laughs> heat the, in our Discord. You see that Discord popping off? Everyone's talking about this. About the Nintendo OLED? Oh, yeah. It's hot in there. It is so not. So many hot. comments. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking or being sarcastic. No, there's or a lot like, of comments going People on. were talking about it. But, I mean, yeah. Frank, you're always saying that you never see any negative comments about Nintendo. I got to say, after this, I saw a lot of negative comments yeah? about Good. Nintendo. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Finally, it's turning. They're, people are wising up. Like, I know we were speculating, like I was specifically speculating, that it seems like the time they would do a new system and I guess there still could be, right? I think I had said it would be fall of 2022 or something like that, right? So this could be a last gasp for the Switch. Um, I mean, it's a slightly bigger OLED screen with an Ethernet port in Metroid Dread colors launching on Metroid Dread Day, October 7th. And I mean, I pretty much buy everything. And I don't think I'm going to buy this. I, I, I'm just like, I don't even play in handheld mode. And the handheld screen gets scratched when you put it in the docking station. Like I have like little scratches at the top of my switch where the docking station touches it. Like this is a no brainer for me. I still might buy it, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm out. Unless there's like a, it's the only thing available on Black Friday for shoppers optimum redeem points. <laughs> then I might, but it's yeah, a, I mean, it's, it's, it's not more powerful, not a more powerful processor. It's not in 4k. Uh, just same joy cons, same joy cons. Yeah. Now, I mean, part of the problem is that there were all these rumors beforehand. People were so sure that all those things were going to be there when they announced this. So, I mean, I kind of wonder, and, and like people still stand by those claims. So I kind of wonder if this is like a COVID thing. Again, I don't, I have not read anything really about this. So I don't know if that's even possible, but like they had plans to do something more powerful, but they just couldn't get the parts together. So they just, this is the best they could do. Maybe I kind of think it's a like maybe they're going to use that screen for the next switch, and it's like a those rumors could be true, but they're for a successor console, and this is like getting production chains going for the screen and all this stuff. Like, and then if they don't sell them, they can reuse the screens for the next console. Seems like just kind of a Christmas uh, cash grab, and fan Nintendo fan people will uh, be all over it. Some, some of the podcasts I were listening to were saying that this follows a similar trend to what they did with, I think, the 3DS or maybe like the Game Boy Advance or something like that, where they kind of came out with this like intermediate one before they did the big upgrade. And also people were saying or speculating that maybe it is like you guys were saying, where there are supply constraints, maybe on the newer processors. So... They had all these screens, but not the processors. So maybe they tried to throw this together just to throw it an intermediate in the meantime, because they wouldn't have been able to meet demand if they had put out a, you know, improved uh, 4K switch version. But you got to be thinking they got to be running, you know, out of time to put out this 4K switch because PS5 is out, Series X is out. Switch has been out for what four and a half, five years now. You're kind of, you're kind of getting way, way behind. If you're gonna basically put out <clears throat> a Switch 4K in, you know, a year or six months from now, like that's gonna go up against the PS5. Like really, you're gonna like you're gonna put five-year-old games parallel to PS5 games. It's just not gonna fly. It's just not gonna hold up. 
as much. Sure I mean, which is kind of like that to some degree, and it's just Nintendo's art style. I, I I agree. I can't believe that AAA development and kind of having to make the Switch the lead skew in some ways, uh, and like basically uglying up, uglying down games so that they run on the Switch is like a weird mm-hmm. thing, and I can't believe it's happening. And yeah. uh, I guess it's just because the install base is so huge, but. It's the only it's thing shocking to me. The only thing I could think of is that they are literally just trying to make it act like a console, but they really want it to be a handheld. Yeah. And they really are just kind of like, no, nope, this is a handheld, but we are still a console quote unquote, cause we have the docking thing and you can't play it on TV. So it's basically like, uh, they're going all in on that, like Vita TV style, uh, gameplay where it's just like lower end games but they play on the tv and then this kind of gets into like is apple arcade gonna start dipping into switch stuff because apple arcade i think is still making a big push to get a lot of people on the apple arcade um i don't know i haven't looked at it we're getting primed for my wish for the last 10 years (laughs) apple and nintendo merging i was gonna say (laughs) what if like Nintendo's future strategy could be just to go to mobile devices when they, you know, they, if they don't want to do consoles anymore and the technology catches up on like the most basic phone. I, I can't see that happening because they make so much money. I know they do because they <laughs> like, probably cost like a hundred bucks to make. Yeah. They put out a switch and then they never lower their prices on their games and people buy like how many, haven't they sold like 100%. 40 million copies of like Mario and shit? Like, they are just making so much money and that's full price. It's not like when you see, Oh, you know, GTA sold 40 million copies. Well, some of those are like at $10. Whereas like all of Mario Odyssey is at $80. So they are making insane. Yeah. They could never justify charging $80 oh, for a mobile game. No, never. And yeah. And why would you miss is that? the price of price point of this is the same as current switch, right? Like yeah, it's, it's not- high. They, yeah. they have no reason to drop the price because people are still paying it. Like it's, it's more, right? Yeah. Isn't it? It's like 370 American from what I... Is it? Yeah, I think so. 350, yeah. I think. 350. Three, 350. Oh. Yeah, still high. That seems yeah. high for <laughs> a, like a half-step upgrade from a Switch. Because I didn't when... Um, Banana, what came, are you kidding me? Is it crazy? What came... When PS... Well, was it PS4 Slim? or PS3 Slim, I can't remember which one, but didn't they like drop the original cost by like a hundred bucks or something and then keep the Slim at roughly the same price? Yeah. But what's the current Switch at? Is the current Switch at 350 American? So it yeah. says, yeah, it says the OLED model will be 350. Nintendo will continue selling the regular Switch at 299 and then they have the Switch Lite. At one ninety nine. So think of how much cheaper it is wow. to manufacture that console after five years. Think of the fact that families buy two for their house, one for each kid. Like this company knows what they're doing when it comes to like bleeding people dry with kids. Like <laughs> yeah. it's ridiculous. And EA is the devil, and this company is like the the nicest company. The it's <laughs> ridiculous. Anyway. They have Mario. And Mario is amazing. Mario's, Mario's whole story. Dude, I, okay. It's, I, I, like I said, I was talking to my friend's kids. All they've talked to me about is Nintendo. Top five Mario games. Top five Nintendo games of all time. Like, th- they, they talk about this stuff all day. Like, they get kids. It's crazy. And they, let's be honest, they are amazing games. Like, I'm sitting there talking to them in the hot tub, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's a good pick. Yeah, I can't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> say Mario Odyssey. And, like, they don't even play half of the games. They just have heard from YouTube channels that they're the best games ever. So it's like, it's just building. <laughs> like, it's hilarious. They watch these YouTube videos, and, like, you know, I got to say, Super Mario Brothers, that's got to be number two. And I'm like, mm, it's a good pick. <laughs> but they like, have it. I'm like, have you played it? They're like, mm, a little bit, not much. So they love this shit. Like, I played 1 1. They're obsessed with like the history of Nintendo. Like, they can't wait once COVID's over to come see all these systems and stuff like that. Like, it's officially going to be Uncle Frank's Retro Lounge. <laughs> it was always a joke before, but it's. Might have to buy a couple more TVs. 
We'll uh, set them up permanently. Up right now. So thankfully the kids today don't even want to play them anyway. They just want to look at them and watch YouTube videos. So I don't even have to hook them up. Perfect. All right. So are we done with fucking Nintendo? Yeah. Big disappointment, but what, what do you expect these days? F plus click. Um, <laughs> let's uh, do what we played. Anyone want to go first? I can start. I uh, got in back into Near Automata after you know looking at the games, and I started from fr- some fresh right from the beginning because I didn't really remember what was happening, and I remember I wasn't really too thrilled with where I was at. And I must say, the opening sequence is really fun, even more fun than I remember. Uh, I was talking to Frank a bit before, like. The constant camera shifting, the, uh, what do you call it? Like the twin stick shooter style mechanics mixed with like almost like 2D platforming mixed with 3D platforming. Just so many different game styles they're throwing at you right off the bat. And then I guess that's probably about an hour, the first hour or so. And then they throw you into more of the the core, I guess, game loop. That's kind of the, the 3D or third person action shooter kind of game with combat. And I, I still liked it this time. I was definitely going like straight to my, straight to my objectives. I wasn't uh, kind of exploring around and trying to find extra stuff, but I did find one little quirk that was bugging me in that when I got to the boss in the desert area, which is kind of the first main boss. I don't even remember. It's like that, that naked guy. Oh, and then those stupid centipedes right before it are, like, impossible. I never fought any of those. I ran right past them. <laughs> and uh, But you get to that boss, and it says before you enter, like, make sure you're prepared. And, of course, I didn't buy shit. So I go in there. I have, like, three heal packs, maybe. Mm-hmm. So I – and I'm healing, I'm healing, and I die. And then it gives you the option to continue or – quit out i think are there your only two options so i continue and continue is not like you go back to your previous entry point it's like you respawn where you with you have saved sometimes a boss well very rarely no so you you do auto save at the beginning of the boss but you don't auto save with the inventory you had when you entered that fight you auto save with the inventory you have so I like went in and I now had zero heal packs and I'm now, and now I have to like replay this boss. Okay. Constantly... I can't remember what the system's called. Are you using plug-in chips? Uh, uh, not really. I mean, I've picked oh, some up. This, I did not get what these were until like the end of my first playthrough. There's like a system screen. I think it's called where you manipulate, like you're picking up all these like, um, speed plus or speed up and yes. you can swap those out and it looks like a stack or like a memory thing. Okay. You yeah, swap I've not looked up. at this at all. Yeah. And there's <laughs> auto heal that like, Oh, there's one that'll like recover your health. If you're not fighting, you need to put those in. So, okay. Yeah. I don't even know what that and is. It'll, if you go to that screen, you can do like auto configurations and there's a defensive one. I would just do a defensive auto configuration. Okay. So I, cause when I would pick up like, my body uh from the when i died previously i did say with like you picked up 11 plugins or whatever it was Mm -hmm. yeah and i was like i don't know what these things are (laughs) (laughs) i didn't know either but that's what it is and it's actually you do sometimes need to reconfigure that stuff and okay you'd have three different ones but that's what i mean it's a game where it doesn't tell you a lot and it's like i mean it's really interesting i wouldn't say it's one of the least accessible games I've ever played in my life. Like it it is weird for the sake of weird, but again, it's a game. The more you play, the more you like it. So I like just got past the naked dude boss. I beat him finally without using any heals. And I am really into the story so far. I'm really liking how they're doing it. Uh, So I, I'm going to go back to it, but I kind of got distracted by another game, which I'll, I'll talk about a little later. So I'll just kind of quickly uh, segue from that. And that I started Scarlet Nexus oh, nice. and I was like, it's 
giving me nearish vibes. Like it's kind of weird, mm-hmm. totally new control scheme, new combat. Uh, I really just did the tutorial and some other stuff and got to say it didn't hook me like the way, at least the tutorial or intro for near is like, it totally hooks you and then kind of dips down and gets better. This was like very off putting to me. And like, again, like relearning how to play a video game. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not going to play it again, but it was not like I have to keep playing this game. Quite the opposite. Hmm. Yeah, it is definitely some weird mechanics you got to learn. Yeah. Which I don't think the tutorial does a great job of teaching it. It's like a lot of these Japanese games are just literally like text boxes trying to explain the systems. They never teach you through gameplay, which Mm -hmm. I do not understand how they have not incorporated that into Japanese games. Like that's like, it's the best. Uh, Like I don't, I don't think any, I guess Mario has that to some degree, but a lot of these complicated games, I can't believe they don't teach you through gameplay. You got to learn yourself. That's you don't, you just have to read screens and it's like, (laughs) it's information overload. Kind of the way Biomutant was. It's like, okay, too much, too fast. You're losing me. Sean, go ahead. Yeah, so my deep dive into VR the past week or two, I I did start playing Half-Life Alex, which I was really enjoying. And it's just like kind of blowing me away how immersive it is just because like you, everything, you, you can interact with everything. And like kind of already touched on that before, but played a bit more, still really enjoying it. But then... Somehow, I just I, I picked up on from the Steam sale Skyrim VR. Mm. Just kind of speaking an impulse of thing. The had, shittiest company in the world. Speaking of Bethesda, and you know, I was like, you know, I just like you so know, the record. I didn't say they were the shittiest. I said oh. they're supreme overrated. Overrated. overrated yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're bad. So, like, I guess in recent years, uh, like, and I have tried, like, played a bit of Morrowind, bit of Oblivion. Like probably all three of these games, I've I played the uh, tutorial and that's about it. You know, like the fur or the prologue or whatever, and that's about that's it. That's about right. And so you know me in open world games, I've generally not been a fan of them, but like the last year or two, Breath of the Wild definitely got into, Cyberpunk got into. There's a few others. Loving Horizon so, Zero Dawn. Yeah. Well, We'll get back to that at some point. But um, <laughs> but I was just like, you know what? Okay, maybe this is the time. Maybe I'll get into Skyrim. And I have did to you admit... Village? I can't remember. You did, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, with the VR, and I think that's a key thing because I do think, you know, like Skyrim, like controls, combat, everything's always a little clunky and there's always weird glitches and bugs and stuff like that. But like when you're playing it in VR, it is so immersive. It is like you're just in this world and it's such a big world that you just feel like you can just explore and do whatever the hell you want. And, you know, that being said, like I am still mainly focusing on the the main uh, storyline, I guess. I'm not doing too much side quest type stuff, but um I mean, it, it works. Like, it's not as good as something like Half-Life Alex. There's a lot of, like, still button pushing and menu management and stuff. But, like, the combat, yeah, you could swing a sword in VR. It's a little bit just kind of like, <laughs> I don't know. There's not a lot of strategy to it. You kind of can move back, move in, hit, move back, move in. Uh, but bow and arrow is pretty fun. And uh, spell casting is pretty fun in VR. So I've kind of been doing more of that style of character and now, uh, Sean, isn't just out of curiosity from what i remember fallout is available in vr as well just on the oculus store right is that i don't think i think Was it's that? on steam oh it is on steam okay but like yeah. it's not i know fallout didn't come to consoles with vr but it is available on pc right yeah and there's like you know borderlands 2 came out um so there's a few other examples of like triple a games that um upgraded to VR that are like open world type games. And I'm curious to maybe try some of those out too, but um, yeah, right now I'm really enjoying Skyrim. I think, you know, there's, this is another thing with VR stuff on PC now. That's like a whole other world that's being opened, which is like mods. 
there's like a billion Skyrim mods as it is. And then for VR, there's like you like I said, you you there's a lot of button pressing and stuff, but you can install mods that you actually physically pick up objects and stuff. So like I haven't really gone down that road yet, but I Wait might till you get your new of... video card. You'll be able to like use the mods from three years ago. It's gonna really amp it yeah, up. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping. I mean, the game's like 10 years old as it is, right? So, I mean, I'm good to go. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Surprisingly, into Skyrim right now. We'll see where it goes. Um, yeah. All right. Back over to Huck, I guess. Oh, so the, other, the last game I played, back into CrossCode. So I saw it was leaving Game Pass, and I played about halfway through it on Game Pass. I do have it on Steam, so I could always go back and play it there, but... I was like, I got to get those achievements, you know, get that pop. And uh, so I've been playing that, loving it. I am i don't know how many chapters there are, but I am i finished chapter seven. I think there's 10 chapters. So I guess I'm about 70% of the way through. And uh, I just, this game is so great. I love it. And they've, they did, they added kind of like a sneaking mechanic, not a sneaking mechanic, but there's like some stealthy kind of parts later on in chapter i think six that weren't in any of the previous chapters so it was nice to see they're still adding gameplay and yeah i just really enjoy the overall mechanics the chapters i'm in now are like more heavy story which is fine um and i just really really like this game it's really fun uh and uh, yeah, I recommend people playing it. They got, I think it comes off Game Pass July 16th. So you got, you know, nine days, eight days, whatever it is. I don't know how to add eight days, seven days by the time this goes out. But <laughs> try it out, try it out. And if you like it, uh, try to beat it in seven days or buy it on Steam or buy it on Xbox. It's really good. Or buy it really on good. PlayStation. No, never. No, we don't, <laughs> that... we don't support the blue here. <laughs> That actually reminds me. I know I saw that. I think Outer Wilds just left Game Pass. Did it? Did it come back on or no? I uh, was because that I was like, oh, I gotta play that before it leaves. Yeah, it looks like it's off now. I don't know. Like, I don't know if they ever renew some of these games. I assume they would do that before it actually says, hey, it's leaving Game Pass. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah like you know so many games to play as it is and then you get this extra added level of stress where it's like oh now it's leaving game pass and i wanted to play it but whatever. one of the biggest regrets of my life was playing was it indivisible to the very end because it was leaving game pass <laughs> <laughs> thinking about that not this week i played that game like for 40 hours what was i thinking the first 20 hours were amazing like absolutely amazing all right i played uh Mario Golf Su Super Rush? Do I even have the title? I think so. Sounds right. Yeah. I mean, I played, I'm not, played a little bit of it as well. I haven't played much. Again, this is every kid has this game. I'm I can't believe this golf game. They're like, yeah, I got this. I got Mario Golf. I got Mario Golf. I'm like, what? Like anything with Mario, kids will buy. But uh, I'm really not that impressed. I love Toadstool Tour, one of my favorite golf games ever. Again. A whole lot of not golfing, which is why I want this game. I want to golf, not to run, <laughs> not to jump, not to do other stuff. I want to golf. The swinging and the actual golfing, I love. The the adventure mode and having to walk around and talk to people that and it takes way too long. And then having to actually, they make you do the running, the course thing, which is a new thing. Like uh, the super rush is... There's like this almost racing element to racing to your ball, which I, it's kind of fun, I guess, just not why I play this type of game. I want to golf. I do the same thing every time. I like manipulate my stamina, try to get the, the turbo boost. Like maybe it would be fun in four players or whatever, but ugh, like just give me a good golf game. Like enough of this bullshit. Sean, what do you <laughs> Well, I, I, I kind of am interested in the adventure mode. I admit it's pretty slow to start. Um, I've heard it gets really weird in terms of like the story and stuff. So I'm kind of curious what that even means. But um, yeah, the yeah the other new mechanic, as you mentioned, is sort of the running to your ball thing. And I haven't gotten to the point where I'm actually like competing against other people on the course. 
I don't know if that like is only a multiplayer thing or if that's I assume that's got to be a thing against computer opponents yeah. at some point as well. But um yeah, just it was a strange experience the first few times like when they introduce it because I would take the shot, just kind of admire the shot and then be like, okay, what what nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes a while to get your head into that mode of like, okay, you got to run right after you take the shot. But um yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like, uh, I guess I just like, I want to be able to fast to... forward. I want to be like, shoot, shoot, next shot, next shot, next shot. Like when you get good at a golf game, it's about the golfing. Yeah, I mean, if that's like, if you're just playing a game where it's just like stroke play or whatever. I wanted a like racing it... game. I play Mario Kart. Like there's already a better version of that game. That. Yeah, I thought that was just going to be kind of like a mode, like a battle mode or versus mode. So I am a little surprised that it's like right there from the beginning in, in the adventure mode, but I'm going to keep Everybody. playing it. I just, yeah, it hasn't really hooked me yet. I just want challenges and missions that are just about golfing, like Toadstool Tour. What a game. <laughs> um, I, one other thing. I briefly played Dark Alliance, which, you know, I've been wanting to, I've been looking forward to, and then the reviews came out and, they weren't looking so good and kind of took the wind out of my sails a bit, but you know, it's on game pass. So got to at least check it out. And, uh, you know, you got your classic forgotten realms characters in there. You got your Drizzt Doerden and, uh, whoever the other guys are. I don't know. I read some of those books <laughs> once upon a time. So memorable. But, <laughs> but, weird that I have no idea what you're talking about. I also have no idea what you're talking about. I thought at least Huck would know forgotten realms, but I am not. I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons guy at all, unfortunately. Did you, didn't I you work, you work on a Dungeons and Dragons yeah. game? I worked on a game. I didn't say I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know all the X Men now, or most of them. Well, I know, you know Daggerdale. Was... Daggerdale's a place, right? Yeah. Well, well that's it... the game I worked on. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as everyone knows, Jay and I met playing Dungeons and Dragons. So, you know, huge uh, role playing guy here, but. Uh, no, I mean, the game, so, like, I really liked uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and 2 back in the day. Would have loved for this to be basically just more of the same. They chose to do something different with it, which I was open to, but I the combat, like, from just playing the first level, I was really struggling with because it has this sort of, like, almost like a Zelda Z-targeting thing, but you're, like, being swarmed by enemies all around you. And you have to kind of like use the right thumbstick to choose who you're targeting. And if you don't do that, like all your attacks and stuff will start like targeting somebody you don't want it to. And like, I was like really frustrated and surprised at how bad it felt. So I don't know, maybe I was playing Drizzt, so maybe I need to try a different character. Maybe that would help. But um, yeah, I was like pretty put off by it right off the bat. So Huge win for Game Pass. <laughs> yeah. Could be fun in co-op. I would like to try co-op still. But that's about it for me. Uh, Huck, do you have anything else? No, that's it. I have one other thing. I played the first chapter of Chicory, a colorful tale. Mm -hmm. And I've been hearing really good things about this game. I, I got to say, I, w I only did one chapter... The review I read, like the negative was like drawing with a controller is very annoying or like it's, they put it in a very nice way. Like it's not that easy to, to draw accurately with a controller. And I would say, yeah, it sucks and it really gets annoying, but I guess it doesn't matter that much for gameplay, but you know, free drawing, you use the touchpad on PS5, which also is really hard to do. So I don't know if there is a Steam version of this game. I feel like it would be way better on Steam. Like, Yeah, there is. Oh, I should just play that. This is one case where I'm like, I kind of just want to play it on Steam. Yeah, I think everybody always says that about Okami as well, that Steam yeah. is the better way to play it. But yeah. So I don't hate it. I think that I really like the art style and the characters, uh, the art, for like the animal characters, not surprisingly. But uh, yeah, it didn't hook me. Nothing's hooking me these days, so... I don't think anything new comes out this week. Maybe I'll get into Skyward Sword. 
I don't know. I Cross code. Sam and Max VR, baby. Just out today. Huge. That reminds me. We got to finish it. Oh, it's five minutes. I'm going to miss that moss sale, aren't I? On Oculus. Just hit stop right now. No. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are kind of done, right? Anything else? Anyone else to mention? No. Hurry, quick, go. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, you can check us out on video if you're listening on youtube.com forward slash game junk. If you're watching, like, leave a comment. Uh, if there's any good games that all these journalists are not talking about because they're not getting payola from Microsoft, let me know. I'm looking for good new games. And uh, next week, who knows what we'll talk about. So we could be in the summer drought here. But I don't know. I got nothing new to talk about. I mean, there, there is an EA thing coming up, I think. Oh, that, that's the 22nd, Not, though, I think. Yeah, a couple weeks away still. We'll figure out something. On Twitter, Sean is Film Junk. Andrew is My Angry Commute or Equilibrium Sis. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.